Hey everyone, we're gonna tear apart a Sapphire RX 460 Nitro. We did this with their Platinum Edition card, showed that it wasn't a great design, but this one's much different. So instead of using the reference RX 480 cooler, this one has its own custom cooler from their Nitro series. It's a dual push fan setup, and the fans are actually removable, which we show in the review of the card uh, for warranty reasons, but we're gonna take it apart. A quick overview of the, the card, there's basically just a totally useless piece of the PCB here that is served only for aesthetic purposes. So it's got their nitro with the, I don't really know what way that's supposed to be oriented, with the Cobra GI Joe logo on it. And then there's a couple of LEDs on here. They do not diffuse across the service, but some LEDs, a uh, six pin and a cooler. So we're just, we're gonna take it apart and see what it looks like. I don't think I'm gonna do uh, a hybrid mod on this one. I know some people have requested it, but We've got some travel coming up, so there may not be time for something quite like that. But we will, uh, we'll see. It really isn't a, a demand for a hybrid mod on this card because it already is performing within a decent spec. Uh, the thermals are, are fairly flat. Not impressive, but not bad. So... The shroud is this, these are not holes. I don't know how the camera picks it up. Those are not holes, it's just a design. Shroud, fan, two screws holding the fan into place. Actually, we can show this, this is kind of neat. So uh, this is cool because it's fairly well designed. Instead of doing kind of a fan cable, like, like this thing here, obviously a normal fan cable that connects to the board, that's a four pin, uh, or you can even see these in here, these kind of four pin cables, which do actually power the fans. The fans themselves are connected with this set of contacts. And so when, the, uh, when you remove it for warranty, you don't have to mess with any cables, which reduces the risk of someone who might not know what they're doing uh, you know, damaging or not plugging in the, the fans or whatever when they're done. It's pretty obvious the way it goes together. Pins, uh, contact, contacts, and that's all there is to it. So we've got the fan and then the shroud is very simply one cable here connecting to the card that controls both fans. You can see that the cable splits to two others and those talk to the fans directly. On this is a little piece of foam. This is not a thermal thing. This is almost definitely a sound absorption thing. Or well, not really absorption as much as just damping so there's no vibration. So that'll stop any unreasonable vibration from the, the fans against the aluminum heat sink causing any issues. The heat sink, very standard setup. So it's an aluminum heat sink. You can see just widely spaced aluminum fins. Uh, there is, there are two heat pipes. So you can see the start and the end of the heat pipe here, start and the end of the heat pipe here. Uh, crimped at the top as always. And those contact, those go through the aluminum heat sink. And then there's a giant block of what looks like maybe nickel plated copper right here. And we'll see that when we pull it apart. And that is covering minimally the GPU, but it looks like it's also covering the VRAM. So let's pull that apart. Okay, very easy. So here's what we've got. This is a four gigabyte card. Unlike the 470, where we saw eight, five, 12 megabyte chips or four gigabit, this one has four chips, four VRAM modules. These are Cheap thermal uh, adhesive bits, you can see right here, is the one for the other module that's missing. Super tiny copper block, and that's because if you look at the GPU proper, this is the smallest one we've looked at yet. So this is Polaris 11. Let's, let's clean this off and see what it looks like. All right, very tiny piece of silicon there in the middle. And then the substrate, normal uh, capacitors lining it on the outside. 
So as usual, just shrunken. And Polaris 11 is a low power, low performance chip. This is a two point something teraflop chip, 2.2, somewhere around there. Oh, this is interesting too. I didn't even notice this. So as a cost saving measure, Sapphire hasn't even populated all of the pins on the PCIe, which I did not notice before taking it apart, even though obviously it was is shown. Uh, I realistically, this thing's not a high performance card anyway, so it's not going to be a 1080 doesn't use all the bandwidth of, a, of X16, so a 460 certainly won't. But still, half these pins are normally uh, ground basically, so they've cut those out. So that's cost saving measure. So for the VRM, we've got a one, two, three, four, looks like five phase setup and or four plus one. Four plus one. Uh, so we got a four plus one phase design, power design. Uh, these are the inductors, your capacitor bank. And then this piece of metal right here is covering the MOSFETs. How do we remove that? Oh, there. <laughs> that, was, that was easy. Okay, so another thermal sticky tape covering the MOSFETs. So there's our MOSFETs. Capacitor, capacitor, inductor, chokes, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's our VRM setup. The six pin power over here on the right side of the board, rather than the top for VRM or VRAM chips or modules rather. So that's really it. There's not a lot to this board. Four LEDs right here. You can see there's a blank fan header up here that they haven't filled because why would they? They have one fan header feeding into it that's powering both fans. So there's really no reason to, to put another one there because they're not talking to the board with the fans directly anyway. It's all done through a pass-through, a couple pass-throughs. The chip, that's it. So that is an RX 460. As I said, don't expect a hybrid mod out of this, but uh, hopefully some other cool hybrid mods coming soon that make a bit more sense with regard to thermals and overclocking than something like this card. As always, you can check our full review of the RX 460s it's already on the channel, should be live at least a day before this went live. And uh, subscribe, hit the Patreon link in the post video to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.